All right, folks, now we're talking about abstraction. Let's talk about the power and limitations of it. All right, let's start. To revisit the digital data we've seen, we talked about how to convert things from binary to decimal to hex and all that, OK? So here's an important fact. I'm just going to tell you kind of a fact sheet. It says that a combination of these abstractions is used to represent digital data. You don't just represent, you can represent a picture by having said these sets of bits are the actual content of that picture. These sets of bits might be how many megabytes the file is. These sets of bits might say who took the photograph. You could have different bits representing different things, really powerful. At the lowest level, everything's bits. Okay? Bits can do anything. It's a really powerful idea. You can represent anything with bits. So you want to do some logical values, values of whether these lights in the room are off. Well, there's a, a bit for each, each light. Is it on or off, on or off, on or off? Okay? How about what I have here? Colors. Well, 0, 1, that can be red. 1, 0, that can be green. 1, 1, that can be blue. Okay? I, I think the numbers are different here, but that's fine. Characters, all zeros is A, zero, 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 one is B, and you can do that, right? How about your emotions? Happy, zero, zero, zero. Sad, zero, zero, one. Melancholy, zero, one, zero. You can have a different bit pattern for every emotion. Are you kidding me? I'm encoding emotions? Yes. If you can count them, you can number them, and you can assign bits to them. So bits can represent anything. Isn't that really powerful? Images, emotions. Movies, anything you can think about, if you can count it and list it, you can encode it by bits. That's a really big idea. So another idea is really powerful higher level abstractions, such as the ones listed there, are usually done by a combination of bits, and those bits might encode different things. Okay? So that's a, kind of the piece of it there, that representing different parts of the abstraction. The interpretation of a binary sequence depends on its context. This is a book by Nicholas Negroponte calling Being Digital, which said that we shouldn't have a CD format or a DVD format or a QuickTime format. You should have a generic format in which these sets of bits tell you how to interpret these sets of bits. And if you had that more general format, you wouldn't have to have any locked in digital format ever. These formats are kind of a program. And you run that to then interpret these bits, whatever that bit means. So isn't that kind of cool that you could separate, rather than having, well, here's my DVD data with the format agreed upon between you and me? No. Here's the DVD a decoder format, and here's the bits for it. And the next year, I have a new format, because there's a new way, H267 or something. And these bits will be different to interpret these different bits in a way that's more compressing or more higher quality or something. Is that cool? It's a powerful idea by Nicholas Ponte calling Digi Digital. And what's also really fascinating is the same sets of bits could be interpreted by the guy wearing the lens of an image saying, oh, that's an image. Remember the first picture I showed you at the beginning with the smiley face? That's a bitch. If you say, OK, that's just ones and zeros, that's a smiley face. The guy interpreting that and making it into a sequence of sound files goes, that's a Jimi Hendrix riff. Those bits could be a Jimi Hendrix riff. Those same bits encoded into characters could be, that's the first five words of Shakespeare's sonnet. Wait, what? The same bits could be interpreted by different lenses as completely different things. It's a really powerful idea. Okay? Now, we talked about the cost. Abstraction is not perfect. Detail removal has a cost. I show the example of the map of London's underground that had been redone by Harry Beck in 1933. Well, is it always a good thing? Notice, he straightened out all the roads. He took out all the geographic stuff. He made the stops all evenly spaced. When in fact, the stops are not evenly spaced. Almost no train station had the stops evenly spaced, right? So is there any cost to that? Sure. If you think that Harry Beck's updated map is ground truth, well, you say, I'm going to take a nap. I've got 30 stops here. The map shows them all as equal spacing. They must be all equal times. So the spacing between the two stops took a minute. I'm going to take a nap for 29 minutes, wake up at my stop. Turns out that they're really compressed. And so you end up missing your stop because it's not evenly spaced. Because, but it looks like the picture shows that they were. Oh, I want to meet you. I'll send my drone to meet you there. And let's see, the train track goes straight. I'll just send my drone to meet me there. Turns out the road, the, look, at the actual, look at the actual picture. It winds around the curves of the underground, however it moves. It doesn't go straight. But if you think it does, you might think that that's the way to do it. And I had a picture last time of a wedding map. If you're off the map, you're lost. If you have the whole Google map with all the detail, you can get back on. If you have only the big major intersections, you're lost in this big white area where it says, looking forward to see you. I'm looking, for, looking forward to see you on the ground. No, it's a wedding map, OK? It's not there. Overflow and round off are two really powerful ideas. Just do it quick. I've got four bits. If I'm counting up, 
count up to four bits, I get to 15, I get to 16, what happens? Like, like an odometer of a car. It wraps around, doesn't it? So now it goes back to zero again, like a car does in the olden days. It would wrap around, like an odometer. That's called overflow. The bits can't hold the number as I keep counting up. Round off error says, I'm trying to represent some encoding of some really powerful long number, like pi, which has an infinite number of digits, but I only have three decimal digits to do it. So I store 3.14. That's round off error. The true value is 3.14159265897932384626433, uh, I don't know, uh, 832, I'm just, I'm just randomly saying numbers, but they're actually right. Uh, 832, uh, uh, 3663, 1971691699. I'm not just saying 50, 50 digits, but guess what? I only gave you 3.14. That was round off error. And I stopped there, but there's an infinite number. Round off error says your encoding is not the perfect number. You've lost that. In summary, abstractions are everywhere and they're really powerful, and applications that you're going to work with and you've seen have a combination of these abstractions in there. We'll see you next time, folks. Thanks so much.